people who live in the world's cities throw away 1.3 billion tons of trash every year. Imagine what would happen if no one did anything to deal with all that. Our economy shouldn't depend on people replacing perfectly good things just so businesses can make bigger profits. Companies need to produce less waste, and we all need to stop throwing our world away. But we also need to find the best ways to deal with the waste we'll still make. At least 15 million people worldwide earn a living by gathering what others have tossed out. These waste pickers separate out what can be recycled, reused, or made into something new. They create positive change, especially in developing cities with weak waste management systems. According to UN Habitat, in 2007, Cairo had a recycling rate of 66% thanks to informal waste workers. Some richer cities with sophisticated, expensive systems, cities like Rotterdam in the Netherlands, recycle less than half that. Plus, Cairo's waste pickers save the city a whopping 14.5 million euros in waste management costs. Waste pickers should be celebrated as heroes. Instead, they're looked down on, harassed, sometimes arrested, or even killed. They get treated like trash for working to solve our waste problems. Waste pickers work hard to create informal recycling systems, only to lose their income when private waste companies are given contracts that include recycling. When that happened in Cairo, recycling rates actually went down 20%. The city and the environment suffered while waste pickers struggled to feed their families. But some cities are realizing that the best solution is to work with informal waste pickers. Often it's waste pickers who lead this change. They organize, then demand the municipality recognize the role they already play and formally include them. One great example comes from Pune, India, where waste pickers formed a strong, democratic union made up mainly of women. Research done by the union and other experts showed waste pickers were saving Pune a lot of money, but they weren't recognized or paid. In fact, if a waste picker injured herself, she couldn't even afford to see a doctor. After years of struggle, the municipality finally agreed to fund health care for these workers. Then, in 2000, the government required municipalities to start collecting waste directly from households. The union, afraid waste pickers would lose their work, ran a successful pilot program collecting from 40,000 homes. Then they convinced Pune's decision makers to contract a cooperative of waste pickers and other urban poor to provide the service. Households pay a user fee directly to door-to-door -door collectors. This builds relations and allows both waste pickers and residents to be more involved in making decisions about how waste is managed. The waste pickers sort what they've collected and sell the recyclables. They divert so much waste from the landfill that they save the municipality $810,000 U.S. in one year. Waste pickers' incomes have gone up by 40%. In Latin America, some cities have achieved good results by paying waste pickers for what they take out of the system. In Diadema, Brazil, the municipality pays waste picker cooperatives for every kilogram of recyclables they keep out of the landfill. Because less waste has to be transported and buried, the city saves $10,000 U.S. every month. After waste pickers in Bogota, Colombia won a number of constitutional court cases, the municipality began paying individual waste pickers in 2013. Waste pickers' incomes have doubled, and because the city ended some costly contracts with private waste collection companies, the new system actually reduced the city's waste budget by 11%. Taxpayers are saving now, too. That's what makes integrating waste pickers such a great solution. It's cost-effective, and it creates positive change for residents including waste pickers. The best solutions build on what already exists informally. While each place is unique, there are some lessons to be learned from successful experiences. Waste pickers need democratic organizations to organize and represent them, and these organizations must have a seat at the decision-making table. 
municipalities must come to think about waste as a social, environmental, and economic issue. They must change how waste pickers are perceived and engage them respectfully. Like in Belo Horizonte, Brazil, where the city and waste pickers held carnivals to celebrate the waste pickers. Integration is a process. A city can start by providing facilities or equipment so that waste pickers can work more effectively. Waste pickers must receive fair payment for the services they provide, in addition to earning income from selling recyclables. Otherwise, the system is just exploiting them to cut costs. Big business will fight hard for the market, because waste means big profits for them. But making waste pickers formally responsible for recycling makes good sense. It saves a municipality money. Even when waste pickers are paid fairly, they charge less than profit-driven companies. It's good for the environment. Recycling lowers greenhouse gas emissions and uses fewer virgin materials. It reduces poverty by providing better, more stable livelihoods, and it promotes social justice by rewarding the efforts of hardworking people and involving them in decisions that affect them. So much good can come from changing the way we treat our trash and the people who work with it. Let's find the best solution for cities and for everyone in them by creating cleaner, healthier, more equitable waste systems. Music